Hi everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique, and I'm here today to introduce my class of the Lovely Lanterns component. Um, in part one, you'll learn to make the component, the smaller component, which will be used for the earrings and the ring. Uh, part two will be finishing the component for earrings. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm introducing to you. So here's the component that I'm going to teach you guys how to make first. It's really small and it only takes a very few beads. Uh, what we're going to do is use a, several different two hole beads and a few little seed beads to capture a, and bezel some 8 millimeter Swarovski um, crystals. And these are the Chatones. They have the pointy back. And this is the Fuchsia. So this is the component we're going to make. Um, then we're going to add, you know, uh, pieces here and here for the earring and here's what the completed earring is going to look like Here we have a Delica, a Crescent, a Delica, a Tila. Delica, Crescent, Delica, Super Duo. Delica, Crescent, Delica, Tila. Delica, Crescent, Delica, Super Duo. And those are the beads that you need to pick up for, uh, to start your initial row. Bring them down to the bottom of your thread and leave yourself just enough tail so that you can keep a good tension on your work. So I'm going to leave maybe just a couple, two or three inches. Then I need to pass my needle back through all my beads. And it doesn't really matter if my crescents or my any of my two-hole beads flip around here at this point. As long as I'm making sure that I'm going through the same hole that I went through on my initial pickup of the beads. So I'm coming through. And I'm going to get this Delica here in this crescent. And I think that's where I'm going to push through. I'm going to hold my tail. And pinch my beadwork just like that and go ahead and pull my thread through. I like to hold my tail at this point because it helps me to keep everything secure and not accidentally pull my tail thread through. Alright, so this is where we are. You can flip your beads around just a little bit if you want to make sure you got everything going the right way. And this is what it should sort of resemble. And I'm going to keep passing through my next few beads till I get to... Uh, where my tail and yeah, my tail thread is exiting this Delica bead and my working thread is exiting this Super Duo. And you can tie a knot here or just I'm just going to pass mine on through. I'm coming out of this Super Duo. I'm going to go on through this Delica Crescent, Delica, Tila, Delica, and then the next Crescent. So I want to be exiting a crescent. Here's my working thread coming out the bottom hole of this crescent. In order to get everything up to secure the rest of my beadwork and make my next row, I need to step down through the bottom hole of this crescent in the opposite direction. Here's my working thread coming out here. So I'm going in through the same side in the opposite direction through the top hole. And now I've made my turnaround and flip my little uh, tila around because I'm going to go from this crescent through this tila. Then I'm going to take a look at the color and make sure that that's what I want. Here's I like that look. I think it adds just enough contrast to the lighter pale colors of the green and the tila color. So here we are with this wiggly work. I'm swapping out and picking up two of my 11-0 amethyst. I'm coming out of the lower hull of my tila. I'm going through the lower hull of the crescent next in line. We're only going to be working with the two hull beads here on this pass. And now I'm coming around my corner. I need to pick up two more of my 11-0 amethyst. I'm going to pass through the lower hull of this super duo. I'm just going to do that passing through these lower holes till I come all the way back around my beadwork. And you take take your time and wiggle your 
two whole beads into position so you can get your little 11 O's in between. Now I'm back around, so I'm going to pick up my last two of my 11 O's and I'm going to go through the lower hole of the crescent bead that I started from. And this time when I pull, you can see that it's giving my little uh, my little square a, not, a lot more shape. And now to continue on shaping my little square, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pulling on my daggum tail thread. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on and reinforce this whole row. So I went through the bottom hole of my first crescent I started with. So now I'm just going to go through all my beads again, starting with the 211 O's, the Tila 211 O's crescent. Make sure that you don't skip any beads or you'll have a thread showing. When you come to your corners here, it's, you, I'm going through, I'm going to show you an easy way to do your ends here. Go through your 211 O's, your Super Duo, duo and 111 O. Because as you work through tightening and shaping this piece up, to get around your corners, it's a lot easier to go through an 11 O, a crescent, and an 11 O at a pass, like that. It's much easier, because you'll see what I mean as we go along. It starts getting really crazy trying to get through, you know, these odd angles. So now I'm going to go through my 11 O, Tila 11 O. And as you can see, as I'm making this reinforcement round, uh, my beadwork is actually taking a much sturdier hold to the shape that I'm after here. And I've made it all the way back around on my reinforcement round, and I'm going to show you how much sturdier this looks. Now, you can really see that this little frame has taken a beautiful, sturdy shape. Check that out. And if you take your little sh uh, chaton and just set it down there and lay your bead cage over it, you can see that it fits really nice and it's holding its shape. All right, so now here we are. And we've got our beautiful little front part of our chaton frame made. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create this little cage on the back to hold the back side of our chaton in. And to do that, we're going to get back down into the lower hole of one of our crescents. So I'm, gonna, I'm coming out of this seed bead, one seed bead right on the opposite side of my um, crescent. So I'm going to move forward through these beads here, an 11-0. Tila 11 -0. And This time when I come around the corner, I'm just going to go through the 11 -0 and the crescent. And I'm going to not go through that second 11 -0 on that side. And I'm going to pull. Alright, so I'm coming out of the upper hull of this crescent right here. All I'm going to do is take my needle and pass through just the lower hull of this crescent. The same crescent. Working thread, exiting here to the left, passing from left to right through the lower hole of that crescent. And I'll pull it nice and snug and make sure that my thread cinches down inside there. All right, so now I want to be working on this side of my beadwork, but my working thread is here. So all I'm going to do is take my needle and pass it straight through the beadwork hole right there. And then I'm going to give it a little pull. And I'm going to give it another little snug, tight pull, just like that. Now, you can see here, there's my tail thread from the very beginning. I'm just going to roll it down behind me, just like this, to keep it out of my way. All right, so what I want to do first is I'm going to create a little loop around this crescent with 15 O's. And I'm going to use these bright pink ones, because I want you guys to be able to see it. And my loop is going to have five 15 OC beads. I'm using the galvanized lilac pink. I'm coming out of the bottom hole of this crescent on this side. I'm going to take my needle and go back through that same lower hole of this crescent bead. And it's okay to wiggle your needle around until you can get it through there, but I only want to go through the crescent. 
just like that and then I'm gonna pull it through trust me you can finagle this beadwork it's not gonna really pull anything out of shape that little frame is really nice and snug and secure I really love this design it works out super cool all right so now I've made my little loop as you can see down in here I have the five little beads looped around this edge of my crescent just like that can you see it all right so now I need to move forward because I want to get into this crescent all right so now I've got to make my last loop picking up my five little metallic lilac beads my thread is here on the right so I'm going to go back through that crescent from left to right go ahead and push through I'm going to push through the Delica and the Super Duo and now I've made the loops that I need around each one of those crescent beads we need to step up so I'm coming out of that Super Duo in the bottom hole I'm just going to step up right through the top hole of my Super Duo in the opposite direction so if you see here that my working thread is on the left bottom of the Super Duo so I'm going left to right through the hole of the top hole of my Super Duo and I went ahead and went through one seed bead now I'm going to go through my corner like I was talking about earlier I'm going to hit the 11 -0, Crescent 11 -0. because now we want to put some loops here on the top hole of our uh, Tila beads so pass through an 11 -0, your next 11 -0, and only your Tila just like that and pull your thread through so I'm going to pick up five more of my uh, metallic 15 -0 seed beads now my thread is exiting to the right of that Tila bead so I'm passing back through this Tila from left to right and I'm going to hit that one seed bead as well on the other side of my Tila and I'm just going to pull my little loop just like this and I'm going to just I'm just going to position that loop towards the back side of my work right there like that now I need to come through my 11 -0 crescent 11 -0 here at the corner without adding any beads just moving around I need to get to my other Tila I'm going to go through that 11 -0, super duo 11 -0. Now I'm going to come around this corner, crescent, 11-0, crescent, 11-0. And this helps to bring everything back into shape as well, moving around this, this outside edge uh, from where we created the loops on the crescents below. If you've lost any shape, this will reshape your beadwork. Works out really nice. So now I'm going to come through just my 11-0 and my Tila. Because I need to put a loop here on this Tila. So I'm going to pick up my five shiny little metallic 15 O's. My third once again is exiting to the right. So I'm going to go back through this Tila left to right. Only the Tila this time. Now I'm going to pull my loop. And I'm going to situate it to the inside of my work and give it a nice little snug tug. All right, so now we have these little loops on this side of our beadwork. We've got one, two, three, four on our crescents. And we have one, two on these outer edges of our Tila. So now I'm coming out of my Tila right here. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go up through three of my 15 0 seed beads. And then I'm going to pull everything through and I'm going to pull towards my work like this to snug up everything now what we're going to do is create the little cage to set this little chaton down into to do this I'm going to use these little uh, opaque matte 15 -0 amethyst light amethyst beads and what I'm going to do to create this is I'm going to pick up two of my 15 O's 
Now I'm going to go into the middle bead of that first loop on my crescent. So it would be the third bead in the in the five bead loop. That's the middle one. Then I'm going to pull. Making sure my thread doesn't get caught up on in my, any of my other beads. And when I pull, you can see it raises up this little uh, ridge of this loop. I'm going to pick up uh, for the snag in between that crosses over the super duo. I'm going to pick up three beads. I'm going to pick up one opaque light amethyst, one pink shiny bead, and then one more of my opaque beads. And now I'm going to cross over to the middle bead um, on the opposite side, crescent, heading in the same direction. So I'm working here to the right, going through that middle bead on this crescent loop from left to right. I'm going to flip it around and pull. You can, now you can really see how it's raising up this circle of beads so I can fit my crystal in. Now on this side, I'm going to go ahead and just pick up two beads again. I'm going through the middle bead next on, on this opposite Tila. And now I'm going to pick up two beads again. So we're putting two beads on either side of the Tila. And I'm going to dig down in here and grab the middle bead of my next crescent loop. And now again, I've got to cross over this super duo. So I'm going to pick up three beads. I'm going to pick up one amethyst opaque, one shiny metallic, one amethyst opaque. I'm going to grab that middle bead on the loop on my final crescent, like that. And we'll shape this up just a little bit more as soon as we set our crystal. Now pick up your last two opaque beads, 15 O's, and here you're going to come back through the middle 15 O above the Tila where we started. And I'm having a little bit of trouble with my light, but here we'll just finagle it. Alright, so I'm coming just through that middle bead here above the Tila where I started. And potentially I could go ahead into, you know, these other beads, but we'll just keep it simple. Let me just snag that one more time. I want only the middle bead. So I'm going to pull my last two little beads into place. Now, I can take my needle and spread out my little circle just a little bit. And I'm going to take my chatone and I'm going to put my shiny side down just like that. And now I'm going to pull, start pulling this thread around a little tighter. Now, we've come all the way around and we're going to pick up these next two. I'm going to reinforce my loops. I'm picking up my next two little opaque beads plus the middle bead of that first crescent loop. I'm going to pull through, tighten as I go along. Now I'm going to go through the three beads I put over the Super Duo, which is a matte, a shiny, a matte, and then the shiny middle bead over the next crescent. So I'm going through those four. And I'm cinching and snugging as I go. So now I have two matte beads. I put in, um, in between. Now I'm going through the shiny bead over my Tila, just like that. So I'm cutting, cutting through those three beads. It's a little hard to see, but that's why I tell you what I'm doing. All right, now I'm coming out of that shiny metallic bead over the Tila. So I'm going to pick up the next two matte beads in the shiny 15 o over my crescent and pull. Now, I want to create one more circle of beads. 
like I have here on this one. You see this tiny little circle. And what that's going to do is protect this foil back just a little bit better from any skin, um, acidy skin, or, you know, rubbing on hard surfaces and scratching it. Now, I want to create one more circle of beads like I have here on this one. You see this tiny little circle. And what that's going to do is protect this foil back just a little bit better from any skin, um, acidy skin, or, you know, rubbing on hard surfaces and scratching it. So what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to we're coming out of that middle bead right here that in the series of three we added. When we added a matte, a shiny, and a matte, I want you to just pass through only the matte and the shiny bead and not the second matte. Just like this. We want to be coming through just two of them. And that's why I used a shiny bead there because now I'm going to create the secondary circle. I'm going to pick up two of my matte beads, 15 O's, and I'm going to pass through this shiny uh, metallic bead over my Tila, just like that. Pull my beads. Pick up two more mats. And then I'm going to pass through this shiny bead in the center over this Super Duo right here. And I'm going to repeat it through the soup next um, metallic bead over my opposite Tila. Pick up two matte beads. Come right through the shiny bead over this Tila. And I'm almost all the way back around because it's really simple. Pick up two more of your matte beads. And come through the shiny metallic 15 over the first Super Duo that we started from. And just dig your needle in there and just get through it like that. And then make sure that your beads aren't getting hung on your crescent or anything else. All right. Now hold, let me pull it into place. And then I'm going to pull it nice and snug. And then I'm just going to reinforce this little circle of beads by passing through my two matte beads, metallics. Um, there will be three beads there, two metallics, or two mats and a metallic for three beads right here. So, third set. Two mats and my metallic. Of my inner circle and then when I come through this last two metallic or two mats in a metallic that brings me back to my super duo but I'm going to go ahead and you see how nice and snug that uh, chaton is sitting in there when that's simple now when you flip your work look how beautiful that sits in there and how shiny and pretty it is all right so I want to get into this shiny bead over this Tila bead. So I only got to move forward the next, um, you know, two more mats in a metallic and come out of that bead right above my Super Duo. And my needle is going to go ahead and go through the next metallic bead heading downwards towards the lower end of the loop. And then I'm going to pass through the very next one as well because I want to move back into my Tila. So I'm working my way, stepping back down from this metallic bead to the next two. Then I can pass right back through my Tila. My working thread's on the left, so I'm going to go through my Tila from left to right. And this is where you guys are going to find out what I was talking about, about how it gets really funky trying to maneuver these corners. So I'm going to go through the Tila and 111-0, like I talked about earlier. I'm going to pull my thread nice and snug. Make sure everything's all snug and secure. Make sure the front part of my unit is nice and shapely. It's really cool how the Tila's uh, 
if you use this outer edge of the tila for this loop, the inner edge of your crescents, it pulls everything in and makes a perfect little bezel. It was so cool.